Hi, I'm Stu from HiveMind Automation and welcome to The Hive. So it's been a busy couple of weeks and I haven't really got a whole lot of content prepared, but rather than not make a video this week, I decided to ask ChatGPT what the seven deadly sins of home automation are. So let's run through what it came up with and see whether or not we agree and maybe even which sins we're guilty of ourselves. So let's start with sin number one. Overcomplicating. One of the biggest mistakes in home automation is trying to automate everything. It can quickly become overwhelming and complicated resulting in a system that is difficult to use and maintain. Now, I do agree with this one and I think in some circumstances I might have been guilty of it myself. I've definitely tried to automate some things that probably don't need to be automated, making it a little bit harder to actually live in the house. On to sin number two. Lack of planning. Home automation requires a well thought out plan. Without it you may end up with a system that doesn't meet your needs or is inefficient. So it's not that I disagree with this one completely, but with the ever evolving smart home landscape, I think it's a little bit oversimplified. While the sentiment is accurate, the reality is a little bit more nuanced than that. With new connectivity protocols like Thread and new integration standards like Matter coming down the line, it does make planning pretty challenging right now. Now that's not to say that having a plan is a terrible idea, in fact it is a great idea, but it's not necessarily about planning every minute detail of your smart home, but perhaps uh, at least planning the things that you do want to automate, uh, whether that be light bulbs, light switches, and perhaps the technologies that you might be looking to use, uh, whether they be Wi-Fi, Zigbee, Thread, or other. Moving on now to sin number three. Core integration. Different devices and systems that are not compatible with each other can lead to a disjointed and frustrating user experience. It's essential to ensure that all your devices and systems can integrate seamlessly with each other. Now again, the sentiment is completely on point, but we can mitigate some of these problems by making use of orchestration platforms like Home Assistant to help with integrating our disparate systems with each other. I do agree that poor integration is a sin, however, and manufacturers themselves actually bear the primary responsibility for this problem. I mentioned Matter earlier, which promises to help here, but the manufacturers do need to get on board. With the recent news that Belkin have paused development on Matter accessories for now, it's still important to select devices that are going to work with your chosen orchestration platform. On to sin number four. Ignoring security. Home automation can be a great convenience, but it can also make your home more vulnerable to hackers and cyber criminals. Ignoring security can result in serious consequences, so it's important to prioritize it. Now, I completely agree with this, and to be honest, I'm a little bit guilty of it to some degree. Again, part of the onus here does come back to manufacturers as well because too many smart home IoT gadgets get designed, released, and used, and then they never receive a software patch, this is a problem. In the current cybersecurity landscape, to say this would be risky would be an understatement. If a malicious actor finds an exploit on one of your IoT devices because it hasn't been patched, to get into your network, they can then pivot inside the network and find other things on your network that they can then exploit. At the very least, it's important to make sure that you're frequently checking for security updates for your accessories. Security should also be forming part of your purchasing decision-making as well. Wi-Fi devices that rely on a cloud connection are obviously the most risky, and this is part of my reason for preferring local control of devices over cloud control. 
Now that's not to say that other protocols like Zigbee, Z-Wave or Thread are completely without their faults. These are important considerations to be making when you are purchasing your devices. On to SID number five, and this one is Neglecting maintenance. Home automation systems require regular maintenance and updates to function correctly. Neglecting these tasks can result in malfunctions, security breaches, and other issues. 100%, I absolutely agree with this. ChatGPT points out the risk of security breaches, but also the likelihood that you'll have malfunctions. So as I mentioned before, checking for software updates for devices is important, but there's even more basic maintenance tasks that you need to take care of to ensure that you're not getting malfunctions and strange behavior in your smart home. If you're using battery powered devices, for instance, those batteries are going to need changing periodically. And there's a couple of different strategies that you can employ here. Some accessories provide battery level data to your home automation platform, which then makes it easier to set up an automation to alert you that the battery needs changing. But for those accessories that don't provide that data, one strategy that you might be able to employ is battery day, where you set a day in your calendar to go around and change the batteries in your battery powered devices as needed. This can be once a year, once a quarter, once a month, whatever cadence you feel you need to keep your battery powered devices functioning properly. On now to sin number six, we're almost at the end folks. Forgetting user needs. The purpose of home automation is to make life easier for the user. If you forget the user's needs and preferences, the system may become more of a hindrance than a convenience. Now again, I absolutely agree, and I'm guilty of this myself. When you're making your home smart, it's really easy to get caught up in what you can do with your smart home and forgetting how other people are going to use your smart home. That said, this is a very similar sin to number one, which is overcomplication. As ChatGPT has correctly identified, the whole point of making our home smart is to make life easier for the people who live in the home and not to have the most amazing and complicated automation setup. And finally, the seventh deadly home automation sin. Overspending. Home automation can be expensive and it's easy to overspend on unnecessary features and gadgets. It's important to prioritize the features that are essential and avoid unnecessary spending. Again, agreed and guilty. But in my opinion, at least, I have an excuse. The cost of accessories like this Eve door and window sensor seem to be quite inflated for what they do. Now, in my defense for this particular sin, I make these videos so that you can then make educated decisions about whether the inflated cost of something like this door and window sensor is actually worth it to you. That being said, I've not tested every device on the market, so it's still important for you to be aware of how easy it can be to commit this particular sin. It's very easy to get caught up in the bells and whistles of new devices that hit the market and get a bit of price blindness when you're going and purchasing them. As I said, I'm guilty of this myself, but I can at least claim my devices on tax. So that is the seven deadly sins of home automation according to ChatGPT. In my opinion, it's done a good job of choosing seven smart home sins, but there's a bit of nuance that it's missed out on. Also, overcomplication and forgetting user needs are kind of the same thing in my opinion. And I'd say that the training data for ChatGPT might not be quite up to date with uh, the introduction of things like matter in the smart home. Are these the seven deadly sins? Honestly, I don't know right now and I might need to put a bit more thought into it than asking an AI. Let me know what you think in the comments section down below and while you're at it, if you enjoyed this format of video, let me know in the comments section and I might start doing some more videos where I ask ChatGPT your questions. 
That's all we have for this video and I do hope that it helped you in your home automation journey. Be sure to drop a comment down below with home automation ideas you'd like to see covered in a future video. And don't forget to follow Hivemind Automation on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button down below to give it a like. And if you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing now. While you're at it, if you hit that bell icon, you'll get a notification when I release new videos, which is normally every week. Lastly, if you like what I'm doing here and you want to help to support the channel, there's a buy me a coffee link in the video description down below. Any contributions you make through Buy Me A Coffee get put towards making more and hopefully better content for you to enjoy. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Stu from Hive Mind Automation and I'm looking forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.